Hey everyone, Michael here with another video. So today we're gonna to be going through our design phase. Now this will only be for million in-house. Uh, if we're doing this via Seric Connect, this will all be done by the lab. But what we're gonna go through today is kind of how we go about designing this, all the tools that we use, my recommendations for it, because what we wanna be able to do is we wanna be able to create in the software the exact restoration that you have in your mind. And Seric's amazing because it allows you to fine tune those details as much or as little as you would like to. Um, but hopefully this video will give you those uh, tools in order for you to be able to do this yourself successfully in the clinic. All right, so now that we finished the acquisition phase of this and we've defined our margin, um, if we're gonna be million in-house, we're gonna go on to the design phase. So as you probably can tell by now, we're just gonna hit the next button down here at the bottom. And what it's gonna do is the software is gonna go through and try to auto-generate a good starting point for our crown. Now, one of the things that you will notice with these Omnicams is that they do a pretty good job uh, with uh, an initial uh, mock-up, but we're gonna just make sure that we're gonna go. So you can see on here that we have just a lot of stuff on the, on the, uh, on the screen. We don't need all of this open at the same time because it can be a little bit overwhelming. So I'm gonna delete the analyzing tools because we will get back to that in a minute. And then also the display objects. Uh, one thing I am actually gonna put back on here is I am gonna select minimal thickness as well. Um, what this will just do is this will just show us that as we go through and adjust some of the areas on the crown, uh, it'll give us a warning if we're making this uh, the thickness too thin for whatever material we're using. So again, Emacs and Zirconia differ for this, and so this is why it's really important to have the correct material selected. So let's get out of display objects right here, and we, we got the tools portion right here. I'm gonna minimize all of this on the left side. So we don't have the tools. One of the things you will see sometimes is that when you get to the design phase is that there's not all of these options available for the tools. And what that just is, is that this has not been selected up here in the corner. Um, so always make sure that it's selected to the one that has all of the options on here. So we're just gonna look through here. Honestly, this initial design looks pretty solid. Um, again, it's more of an ideal scenario here on a Typodon. But for an actual patient, everyone's occlusion varies, everyone's teeth and anatomy vary. And so what I'm gonna do first off is I'm gonna go to the biogeneric variation tool. And what I'm going to go ahead and do is this is a slider or a kind of more of a spectrum of different options for the teeth with different amounts of occlusal anatomy. So I'm gonna go through here and kind of slide through and you can see this lighter blue portion on here, that is the minimal thickness where it will yell at you for. So what I kind of would like to do is I kind of like to have something with anatomy that I like, but also with minimal thickness that I also like. Um, this preparation, it, it's a really great looking preparation, but it is a little bit under reduced. And so I'm gonna come through here to about Honestly, 20, 20 is actually exactly where we had it to start off with, uh, but you can see uh, that it's got the proper thickness. And one thing to note, especially with uh, these crowns that we're doing and a mistake that I see all the time is under reduction on the occlusal. That especially where if we go over here to view and show the upper jaw as well, so we can kind of look at the occlusion, especially where for these mandibular teeth, these lingual cusps of the maxillary teeth, where it's going to be occluding, you need to make sure there's enough occlusal clearance. That's why it's so important to make sure you have the patient occlude so that you can actually look in there to make sure that there's enough clearance uh, before you scan. And even when you are scanning, it is important to make sure that you're verifying that because if there's not enough occlusal clearance, what's gonna be way much easier to do than anything else is just go back to the patient, adjust the preparation a little bit, cut out that portion, kind of how I showed you before, and, uh, go ahead and rescan that area because it will make your life much easier on the design. Now that the biogeneric variation um, has been set to what we would like, we're gonna come over here to the shape tool. Um, one of the things to note is that we always like to use the form tool downstairs. Uh, that's kind of our go-to. I think that's kind of what we're used to in the lab. Uh, you'll see that's actually gonna be the last thing we use. And frankly, I don't even really use it that much. And you'll see why. So. First off for the form tool, we've got two options on here, either anatomical or circular. We're gonna choose anatomical. And we've got two direction and four direction. I prefer to use the two direction because it does just make it a little bit easier um, to use for us. And what we're gonna be able to do for this is we're gonna click on an area. I'll just show you an area that's uh, not as important just to kind of 
illustrate what it does. So we're going to hover over this cusp right here. And if we click on it and drag, you can see, well, that's kind of an obnoxious cusp, but you can see that it from an, it, it anatomically will raise the area in uh, while preserving the anatomy rather than just flattening it or smoothing it out so that we can preserve as much anatomy in these teeth as possible. So obviously we don't want to do it that much. So we'll just hit undo right here. But one thing that we would like to do is you can see right here, we've got the contacts. So red contacts in this area are going to be way too strong. We don't want red. Um, all that's going to be is that's just going to be an area that you will have to adjust uh, chair side pretty significantly. So what I would recommend and what um, Sarek recommends for it is to reduce it down to kind of the light blue, um, the lightest blue it has of almost like a, I don't know, like a teal color or something and maybe have a little bit of green, um, but no, no red and no yellow if you can avoid it. So we're gonna come through here. I'm gonna hover over this portion on the occlusal table, click on it and just drag it down. Until we're down to, there you go. One area of a little bit of yellow right there. Um, let's actually bring it down a tiny bit more. And now I'm going to click on circular as well. So now that we got that, this is where you kind of get to fine tune your anatomy. So I'm going to go to the view option in the top and the right side and click on the upper jaw so that I can kind of design this crown in a way that will fit well within the occlusal structure for this uh, patient. So I'm actually going to raise these buckle cusps a little bit. Kind of through here, not too significantly, but I would like to mimic the adjacent teeth and kind of how you see that they interdigitate well within the occlusion. This will kind of give me a starting point that then I'll go back, I'll hide the upper, I'll be able to look a little bit more at the occlusal table so that I'm able to adjust this occlusion exactly how I would like. So hide the upper jaw again, Come back here to the occlusion, our occlusal view, move it over. I'm actually going to raise these up a tiny bit more, kind of off through here. And again, using this anatomy feature, you're able to maintain your, uh, or it's using the shape tool rather, you're able to maintain your anatomy so that I can get this to. Uh, really be similar to the adjacent teeth. So I could come through here a little bit more, a little bit of a contact there. And this is kind of where you're able to, uh, you're able to fine tune this as much or as little as you would like. If you wanna just generate something and hit go, you can do that. But what this will save you if you go through and actually care about your, um, your design is it will save you a significant amount of adjustment chair side. Um, because there will just be, you're, you've already kind of dialed in your occlusion, if you will, and you'll be able to cement, uh, try this in for the patient and hopefully make minimal adjustments. So I'm going to raise this marginal ridge just a tiny bit through here. Yeah. So this looks really quite solid. Um, we have well-defined cusps and again, we have a lot of anatomy in there as well. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to check the context. Um, because contacts are pretty similar. You want that lightest blue. And again, that lightest blue color, just to show you, is this blue right here. I guess I'm pointing, but you can't, you can't see my hand. Uh, this lightest blue, why am I still pointing? The lightest blue portion uh, in the middle of this lower area right through here. And so what we're going to do is we would like to have that with maybe a little bit of green um, on the contacts. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna hide the lower jaw over here, click hide lower jaw so that we're just looking at this and come through here. I'm gonna bring this out just a little bit more. What we would like is, this is where your morphology comes in. This is where I hope you paid attention in Dr. Louis's class because um, contacts that are gonna be between molars, they're gonna be broader buccolingually than say, you know, a canine next to a lateral incisor. So you have to be aware of what teeth are going to be adjacent to it. In this case, we've got a premolar um, on the mesial and a molar on the distal. So we're going to 
bring this out a little bit more. Maybe have a little speck of green in there if we'd like. It's not the end of the world if we don't. Just like that. And so you can see here is that on the mesial contact, I like this a lot. That it's not super tall um, in size of, or occlusal gingivally, um, but it is a little bit wider buccal lingually and kind of replicates a more natural contact than, but if we compare it here on the distal, you see how it's very tall um, buck, or on a, from an incisal occlusal perspective. So this is when, for the first time, we're going to come down here. I'm going to try to fix it a little bit with the form tool to kind of come through here. I don't mind that. But I'm actually going to go to the uh, form tool instead of the shape tool for the first time. Now, what I always see in the clinic is this is always everyone's first um, first gut instinct is to go with the smooth tool or the add tool or the remove tool. You can see this is actually the very last tool that I'm using in this case. Um, the form tool gets overused way too much and kind of what that results in is a few things. One, either an over smoothed restoration that lacks anatomy um, or you also can see what I see a lot of times is almost looks like a golf ball appearance on the occlusal of you just went in with this uh, remove tool over here, just kind of dotted in and adjusted the occlusion that way. Um, most patients generally, uh, I don't, they don't prefer having golf ball uh, occlusal surfaces. So uh, it's best to kind of use that shape tool to kind of be able to create that anatomy um, for the patient. So what I am going to do here is I am going to uh, kind of smooth out um, the gingival portion of this contact right here. So I'm going to click the smooth tool right here. I'm just going to smooth out through here just to kind of make sure that this contact is not too excessive. So I like that, that you can see it's not super tall in size of gingivally, um, but it is a little bit broader buccolingually. I think I've said that probably about 30 times by this point. And same through here, I am going to smooth out this emergence profile a little bit. So I like that. Let me go ahead and I'm going to check this emergence profile by turning back on the lower jaw scan. I'm going to turn off the tools just so we're able to see it a little bit clearer. And this is where it's always fun to be able to go through to position it exactly how you would like. So here on the mesial that you can see, I like that emergence profile. Um, this, uh, this typodon does have a pretty broad um, contact right there, or uh, there is a pretty large gap there. So it's not ideal, but it is fairly smooth and I don't mind it. And then on the distal, come up through here. Yeah, I like that a lot. Now the smooth tool, I really don't use it on the occlusal surface much at all because this looks like some beautiful anatomy on here that looks very natural. And I would like to preserve that as much as possible. Um, one thing to note that I will say um, is, generally speaking, if you're doing a maxillary uh, molar, especially a first molar, and sometimes the software can generate a really defined and distinct cusp of, cusp of, well, cusp of care belly on the, on the lingual portion, a lot of times you'll have patients that uh, will kind of rub that with their tongue a lot and always kind of feel like that's something that's not supposed to be there, even though it is an anatomic feature of most teeth. Um, so what I sometimes will use that smooth tool for is just to smooth out that cusp of care belly um, that the software can sometimes generate. Again, you can use the biogeneric variation that sometimes it will get rid of it. Uh, but if I really like the occlusal anatomy for a tooth that does have a cusp of care belly, I will use that smooth tool to just kind of bring in that cusp so it's not too significant. So here we are. We finished our design. Um, looks pretty textbook here. And again, it, what one of the things just to make sure is that if you do spend a little bit more time on your design, it will save you time chair side for the patient and ultimately will result in a better crown because you're going to preserve more of that anatomy rather than just accepting the initial design and just hitting the mill um, and then kind of drilling down that anatomy and adjusting away that anatomy. This will allow you to create something that once you mill it, you try it in the patient's mouth, it's going to fit perfectly and they're going to be happy with it and you won't have to adjust it much at all. All right, so the very last thing we're gonna check with our design before we send it to the milling process, and this is very, very important that we do, is to make sure that our minimum thickness is correct across the entire restoration. Because if it's too thin um, for the material that we've selected, 
uh, then it will increase the chance of fracture for the patient and it will uh, decrease the longevity for them. So we're gonna kind of position the camera like I have right here on the screen. And I'm gonna click on analyzing tools on the right side. I'm gonna click on this and we're gonna click on slice right here. And what this is gonna do is you can see an overlay right here of we've got the minimal thickness in a light blue and then everything additional to the minimal thickness is going to be in white. So what we need to make sure of is we need to make sure that there is enough, like we've exceeded the minimal thickness on all areas. And this is one of those reasons it's so important to make sure that you properly reduce the occlusal portion of it. Otherwise, um, if you haven't, then you'll get areas that are not properly reduced. So I'm going to click on this and be able to kind of go towards the distal. It looks close through all of here, but we're good. I don't see any areas and it'll kind of show you almost like a hole, but we follow the minimal thickness very well. As we come here towards the mesial and there we go, we're good. So it's really important to look through on this view just to make sure that none of the areas are uh, have too thin of a thickness. So now that our design is going to be ready, we're gonna get it approved by our faculty and we're gonna move on to the manufacturing stage where we'll mill it in-house in the next video. So that just about does it for our design phase. So we went through all of our strategies that we would use in order to effectively design our restorations along with the tools that we would use in order to do so. Again, our goal with this is for you to be able to design a restoration that you have in your mind that aligns with your clinical goals for your patient and be able to translate that into your real clinical practice. So our next video is gonna be on manufacturing. Um, and so thank you guys so much for watching the video on design and have a great rest of your day.